to ASGA Live. I'm Butch Oxendine, ASGA's Executive Director. This new show will feature news, solutions to problems, ideas, trends, and more. We're going to have updates on new ASGA projects and services that we're planning, as well as interviews with student government leaders and advisors. We'll have website tips how to use ASGA's resources. But first up is ASGA News. As of January, ASGA now has 906 member institutions from across the world. This makes us by far the largest ever organization serving student governments. One way ASGA can help our members is through research. We encourage members who are investigating a problem, trying to get answers to an issue, to let ASGA do the research for them. Instead of spending their valuable time, ASGA can do research just for them, but this research then will be added to our knowledge base so that other members can benefit from the research. To do that, all you have to do is contact ASGA's offices or by email at info at asgaonline.com. This spring, we suggest that our members attend one of our 10 training conferences. We have conferences in New Orleans, New York City, Philadelphia, and Orlando in the next couple of months. And these training conferences are hands-on, very practical, uh, lots of information exchanged, lots of new ideas. You'll learn a great deal and will benefit. Also, consulting is an, is an area where we can assist. Several of our members bring ASGA to their campuses to help them with constitution revisions, amendments, bylaws, uh, changes, even things like analyzing strengths and weaknesses and training individual members. At Emory University in Georgia, the College Council recently approved the idea of using airport shuttles to ferry fellow students from the Emory campus to the Atlanta Hartsfield Airport. This is an example of student governments using their limited funds to give students a service or program that matters to them. ASGA calls it a signature program, something that student government is known for producing and something that students benefit from. So the airport shuttle saves students from having to, have to hire a taxi or get a rental car to get to the airport when they go home for Thanksgiving, Christmas, etc., spring break. Next up is East Carolina University's uh, student government has been working on creating a greener campus through the formation of a student government sustainability club. Now this sustainability club is trying to promote things like the use of LED lights on campus to save energy and resources, biodegradable fuels, um, conservation of energy, etc. So this is a trend around the country that ASGA has noticed student governments becoming more involved in sustainability efforts. At Florida A&M University, student government has bought buses that student clubs can borrow to travel to conferences, events, conventions, etc. And of course that's a big expense and not every student government can fund that sort of project. But the larger the institution, the more common that sort of major initiative is. So at Florida A&M, student government has funded the use of buses. At Youngstown State University, they have proposed a student tax. Now this is different than a student fee, which funds most student governments. This student tax, they're actually calling it a tax, which is unusual, and it is to help provide more resources and services for uh, clubs and organizations and students uh, through intramurals, etc. The University of South Dakota student government has planned a memorial system in the event that a fellow student is to pass away, passes away. There is now a formal process for a memorial to be done. Very innovative, uh, unusual idea. The University of Southern Mississippi student government has developed a way to protect student bikes. 
So those who ride their bikes to and from class now have, thanks to student government, a way to protect the bikes. It's called the Eagle Bike Storage Program. And then lastly, at Saginaw Valley State University, student government developed a partying bill of rights. It's the first time ASG has ever heard of anything like that. It is a list of specific recommendations and requests. You know, what happens to someone 21 or older at an underage drinking party? Um, can police force someone to take a breathalyzer? It's just a whole list of rights. Some would seem to be no-brainers that we're protected under these, under the normal law, but student government has taken, taken it a step further and listed these questions for students to consider. The Partying Bill of Rights. Anytime you're at the ASGA site, you can always click on our live chat button. The live chat button is on the top left and there's a green button that says click here live for live help. And when it's green, that means an ASGA representative is there to answer your questions. So no need to fumble around the website looking for what you need. You can get live help. Of course, ASGA is also available by toll-free number. You can call anytime to get help. By email, you can write us as well. So between those three, the live chat, phone, and email, you can get instantaneous help. No need to struggle to find what you need. Our goal is if you spend more than two minutes at the website trying to find what you need, let ASGA help you. Because our biggest benefit, I think, is saving you time. If we can help you save time, we're going to make you more efficient. ASGA is often asked by our members to provide counsel, answer questions, and give advice. This is through our Ask the Experts section of the ASGA website. Recently, a school from Wisconsin, a technical community college there, inquired about the idea of hiring a student to become an office manager or stenographer for that student government. And the question was, what should they pay this person? And also, how often is this done? And the answer is ASGA certainly tracks uh, at public institutions. Many public institutions have a paid staff that's even non-students. Many public institutions, say the University of Michigan or University of Florida or UCLA in California, will fund an office staff, uh, an executive director for the office, secretaries, and other positions. But public, uh, that's confined mainly to public institutions. Technical and community colleges, it's very, very unusual to see a paid staff member that's part of student government. And this is outside of the normal officers. So the answer we gave her was, it's rare, very rare, for a community or technical college to have a paid staff member. Doesn't mean it's unprecedented, so we further answered that if this member wants us to, we will do research on their behalf to find out if there are other community colleges that offer a paid position. Our interview today is with Chris Irving, one of ASGA's featured presenters at many conferences across the country. You were involved in student government in college, right? That's correct. Uh, I was actually the student government president for two terms at the Ramapo College of New Jersey. Uh, I served uh, my first year as a uh, student government president who was uh, you know, uncontested, unopposed, uh, and had a really crummy year. And I learned a great deal uh, of what to do, but also really what not to do. And so my second term, when I was opposed, I really learned a lot of skills that I really apply now to my work with student governments. 